Hi, this is Laura Slominski with the Dinah High School, and today we're going to look at the notes for section 10.4, Equivalent Rational Expressions, and LCD, which stands for Least Common Denominator. You can see that our objective is I can write equivalent rational expressions and find the least common denominators. Like fractions, rational expressions can be simplified if the numerator and denominator have common factors. Rational expressions can also be multiplied by p of x over p of x, which means we can multiply it by the same thing on top and bottom because it's equal to 1 and it's still equivalent. So if you are asked to simplify, this is the process you're going to take. First, you're going to factor the numerator and the denominator. Now, we reviewed this yesterday, um, but we do want to make sure that we take the numerator, x squared plus 5x plus 6, and I see that, and I recognize that it's quadratic, so I'm going to have to use my Xbox method. x squared 6 gives me 6x squared, 5x on bottom. This was actually one we did yesterday, 3x and 2x. So x and 2, x and 3, which means that the top factors, I'm going to write it up here as x plus 2 times x plus 3 over. Now you can see that we have a quadratic times a linear factor, so I have to take the x squared plus 3x plus 2, factor that using the xbox method. I have x squared 2, gives me 2x squared on top, 3x on bottom, which is 2x and 1x. My factors become x plus 1, x plus 2. So on the bottom I have x plus 1, times x plus 2, and then don't forget x plus 3 was already there, so I have to keep the x plus 3. Okay, so if you're asked to simplify, the first step is to factor the numerator and the denominator, and the second step is to divide out common factors, which is actually what we did yesterday when we were finding holes and asymptotes. So I look back at the original problem, and I recognize that an x plus 2 cancels out, and an x plus 3 cancels out, which connecting that to yesterday means there's a whole lot x equals negative 2, x equals negative 3, but that's not part of today. And so for my final answer in simplified form, if I cancel everything out on top, remember it's technically times 1, so it's a 1 on top, over x plus 1. So we started with this really ugly rational expression, x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by x squared plus 3x plus 2 times x plus 3. And we've now learned that in simplified form, it's the 1 over x plus 1. So if you're asked, asked to simplify, that's the process. Factor the top and bottom and divide out the common factors. Now the second part of today's lesson is to be able to find the least common denominators. So when we look at this next section, it says write 3x over x plus 3 as an equivalent rational expression that has a denominator of x plus 3 times x plus 5. So really we want to take this one, and instead of just x plus 3 on the bottom, we want it to have an x plus 3 times x plus 5. Well, since the current denominator is x plus 3, we see that it's missing an x plus 5. Okay. So if we take our original problem, 3x over x plus 3, and we apply what we know about fractions, um, and that is that we can multiply it by anything we want as long as it's equal to 1. Technically, I want to have an x plus 5 on the bottom. So I put an x plus 5 on the bottom, and I put an x plus 5 on the top. Because if I actually multiply this, x plus 5 divided by x plus 5 is 1. So I could rewrite this as 3x times x plus 5 over x plus 3 times x plus 5. Now again, you do not want to cancel out the x plus 5 because we just put it in. So that's where it's a little confusing because if we're simplifying like we did above, um, we're actually going to cancel out things that are the same. But if we're making a common denominator like we are in this case, case this is a scale we're building for the future, we would actually leave the x plus 3 put times x plus 5. Now you'll want to confirm with your teacher what their expectation is from here. Um, I believe we agreed last year that we would um, expand the top out, so 3x times x is 3x squared. Don't forget to distribute that 3 to the other, so plus 15x. But we will leave the bottom as x plus 3 times x plus 5, 
mostly because that's what they asked us to do, right? They wanted us to have a denominator of that. So for me and my classes, I have this as my final answer. But again, make sure you confirm that with your teacher. Okay, so now it has us practice a couple, one of each of these. So the first one, it says write 5 divided by 5 times x minus 25 as an equivalent expression with the denominator of x minus 5 times x minus 1. Now the first thing we do have to do in this case is I recognize that the denominator has a GCF of 5 already. So you do want to still factor the denominator if you're asked to write it as an equivalent expression. And now I recognize that they wanted to have an x minus 5 times x minus 1. Well, I already have the x minus 5. So now I need to put in an x minus 1. But before I do that, I'm going to recognize that in this case, well, I have a 5 on top and a 5 on bottom. So I'm actually going to rewrite this as 1 over x minus 5 right now. And now again, it's missing an x plus 1. So to have it have that denominator, I'm going to multiply the denominator by x plus 1. And I can do that. The reason I'm going to is because they're asking me to have that as a denominator. And I can do that as long as I also do it to the top of the fraction. When I multiply this out, I would do 1 times x, 1 times 1. So I'm left with x plus 1 on top over x minus 5 times x plus 1. And again, because that's what they wanted the form as, I'm going to leave it there. All right, number two says simplify. Okay, so one thing that's important is to understand the difference between the two types of questions you'll be asked from this. If I ask you to write it as an equivalent expression, that's when you're actually making it more messy. And if I'm asking you to simplify, that's when you're factoring and canceling everything out. In order to simplify, I need to factor the top and the bottom. So I have x minus x squared. That's my first factor. I recognize that they have an x in common, 1 minus x. Okay, so I rewrite it as that. Oh, that's an x plus. Sorry, that makes more sense. Which is the same as x times x plus 1. I could write it either way. Okay, this can flip-flop. Okay, so my first factor gives me an x times x plus 1. Then on top I have x squared minus 1, which we reviewed yesterday, is the same as x squared plus 0x minus 1. And that one we did, again, yesterday in the note, so it's x plus 1 times x minus 1. You could use the um, Xbox method, x plus 1 times x minus 1. And then finally, I do need to factor x to the fourth minus x squared, which is on the bottom. I recognize, first of all, that there's a GCF of x squared. If I factor a GCF here, it's x squared minus 1. And again, we just factored that x squared minus 1. I have x squared times x plus 1 times x minus 1. So we factor everything times x plus 1 times x minus 1. And again, if we're talking about simplified form, we cancel everything that can cancel. We divide out the factors. So I have an x minus 1 on top and bottom. They cancel. I have an x plus 1, an x plus 1 on top and bottom. Now notice I have another x plus 1 on top, but that one doesn't have one to cancel with, so that one's going to stay. And finally, I have a single x on top, and I have two x's on bottom. So the x squared is going to go away. So that was like x times x. One of them cancels out. So it looks like I'm left with an x plus 1 on top over an x on the bottom. And so this is my final answer. Now some people would say, well, can't I cancel out the x on top and x on bottom? The answer is no, because it's x plus 1 on top. All right, then this leads us to the final thing for today, which is finding the least common denominator for two rational functions. So the least common denominator will be LCD from here forward. The first step is to factor each denominator completely and simplify each fraction. So we're going to use what we talked about first. We're going to simplify. You're always going to have two fractions. Simplify them first and write any repeated factors as powers. Then you're going to list the different factors. If the fact denominators have common factors, use the highest power of each common factor. So let's talk about that. So again, our starting point with number 1 here is to factor each. So negative 2 over GCF of 3 times x minus 5. 
and this is 6x over 4 times x plus 7. Yeah. Now, again, simplify each fraction. I do need to reduce numbers. So here I notice that 6 and 4 are both divisible by 2. I can't simplify the left one at all. So negative 2 over 3 times x minus 5 is as simplified as it gets. But 6 divided by 2 is 3x. And 4 divided by 2 is 2 times x plus 7. And then for the LCD, you are going to list the different factors. Different factors. So I have a 3, an x minus 5, a 2, and an x plus 7. Because they're all different, I list all of them here. And we are going to leave it in factored form, but I do see that I have a 3 and a 2. So my final LCD is 3 times 2, which is 6 times x minus 5 times x plus 7. So this is one of those lessons where we are building a foundation of skills to use for a bigger purpose later on. Okay? All right. So number 2, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to factor first. So the x squared minus 11x plus 24, I used the xbox method. And I got negative 14 over x minus 3 times x minus 8. And then for the second fraction, again, I factored x squared minus 6x plus 9 using the xbox. I get x minus 3 times x minus 3. And so once, and I can't simplify those two fractions anymore, so they're in simplified form. And now when I go to find my LCD, I list out my common factors. Okay, so first one, x minus 3. Because I haven't used it yet, I put it down. x minus 8, I haven't used it yet, put it down. Then I get to the next one, x minus 3. Oh, sorry, this one's supposed to be an 8. x minus 3, I already put here. So I don't write this one down. But then I get another x minus 3. I've only used x minus 3 once since there's two in the same denominator. I need to put it again. Now once I have this, if I do have the same factor twice, I am allowed to use that with exponents. So the actual least common denominator would be x minus 3 squared, because there's two of them, times x minus 8. To follow the directions above, in this case you could have just written it as x minus 3 squared, and when it says use the highest power, they were comparing that you had x minus 3 to the first here, x minus 3 squared here. It's the x minus 3 squared that comes out. I usually just kind of think about it one at a time. All right, and then the last two examples here, this factor does x plus 6 over 8 times x minus 3, 6x over 4 times x plus 7. Again, this one stays the same, x plus 6 over 8 times x minus 3. This one, though, they're both divisible by 2, so 3x over 2 times x plus 7. So very similar to the first one, um, except there's a big difference. So first, for my least common denominator, I have an 8, and then I have an x minus 3. But because 8 is divisible by 2, I don't put the 2 in again. Okay, and so then I use the x plus 7. So the difference between number 1 and 3 is in number 1, I put the 3 in, and then 2 was not, or 3 is not divisible by 2, so I had to add the 2. In this case, because 2 is, or 8 is divisible by 2, I don't put another 2 there. Okay, so this is my final least common denominator in this case. So that's one other thing that you have to be a little bit careful of. Last but not least, I have 12x over 15 times x plus 4, and I have 5 over x plus 4 times x plus 5. So try this one on your own. And when I go to do this, oh, before I do that, this becomes a 3, and this becomes a 5. Oh, sorry, 4 and 5. So I actually have 4x over 5 times x plus 4. So the least common denominator is 5 times x plus 4. I already used the x plus 4, so it's times x plus 5. And that would be my final least common denominator. Thank you.